Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's a 2020, it's a Ford, it's the Escape. It's got the big one five, turbo. Uh, and look at that, you can get the battery out of these ones. So they've uh, rethought what they were thinking and uh, that, that you can do. However, the money light is on, uh, so it's here, inspections do. Uh, of course, it won't pass with the light on. Uh, I read the codes out of it, not sure what I was gonna find, but it has a few EVAP codes in it. Now, I've never worked on one of these, or at least this model, so I thought, hey, what the hey? Let's bring these YouTube people along and we'll see what we can figure out. First and foremost, we are, we're gonna have to leave the key on. It has, I believe, one problem causing all the codes. I believe we're gonna find either a wiring issue with the canister vent valve, or if we're gonna find just simply that, a bad vent valve. It has a code for the canister vent valve circuit, a P0446, I believe it was. We'll look at that again. Then it had a code for a uh, large EVAP leak, which would stand to reason. Um, oh, theoretically, we should have this over here, not because it sparks, but because it does have a battery monitoring system. This way it can detect current going in the battery and out of the battery through the current sensor. Um, I don't know how important it is, but technically that's what you're supposed to do with these current sensor systems. Um, so let me show you the codes that are in it and then we're going to develop a bit of a game plan. I have an idea which way we're heading right now, but let's, uh, let me bring you along here. Give you a rundown where I'm at. Pulled codes, just generic OBD2. We have the classic 446 for the uh, vent control circuit. We have your classic 455 large leak, which would stand to reason, you know, if the control circuit isn't working, can't control the valve, we're obviously going to have a large leak during testing time. Uh, 446 in there permanently. And then another pending code for this P04F0 EVAP system, high load purge line A performance. Not sure what that means. I did look in service data. There's a specific test that runs when it checks uh, fuel tank pressure at a given time, and if it's not correct, that's kind of the, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. So I'm not super worried about that either because we don't have control of the vent at this point. So I think we're gonna look at you know our current code first and see what's going on with this vent control circuit. In order to do that, we need to know where it lives. So I looked uh, on service data, and we have to flip the car upside down, according to the picture here and then remove this uh, blue piece by taking out the purple pieces and then we should find it. Uh, let's see, that's it, yeah, that's where it is. Uh, the other thing I looked at is I wanted to know uh, wire colors, you know, so we know uh, power and ground going to it. So it looks like uh, here's a canister vent valve says under vehicle below driver's seat, yada yada. It looks like we have a power. It's the same power that goes to this vapor blocking valve, whatever its purpose is. And then, um, then this must be the control side. So the nice thing is they use the same color wire to make it easy. <laughs> Anyhow, let me get it up in the air and we'll see what we can find. see anything I did see this was hanging down though when I went to pick it up usually yep that's what I was gonna say usually these are just like this let me see if I can get you up here now I probably can't let me just show you what usually happens with these things in our neck of the woods is you have this you ready Ta -ta -ta -ta. <laughs> you got half the dirt road you live on stuff up here and all this crap gets ripped off this is up here I mean look how deep that is. I'm just reaching in a couple inches that's all dirt and salt. So these things that they add under these cars, uh, I like to take them up, like on my own vehicle, like my own vehicle, take them, throw them right in the garbage. First thing you do, because this, these things will rot out your car so stinking fast. Make your head spin. <laughs> Teacher used to tell me, I'll hit you so hard, make your head spin. <laughs> I love school. Um, all right, well, let's get this cover the rest of the way off. It's kind of ripped off back here. And you'll see this thing's gonna have a tremendous amount 
of dirt and debris on it. So let's get to yanking here. So there's our vent valve. There's our wiring. Just wanted to see if there's anything obvious. Without touching it. Looks like uh, possibly a fuel tank pressure sensor. That must be that other valve they were talking about there. That blocking valve. Yeah, because that's got the two different wire colors on it. That's got two wire colors the same right here. Like I say, we could simply have just a bad vent valve. Well, let's grab our scan tool. Let's see if we hear any clicking or anything down here. Um, and then go from there. All right, so I've got our vent valve pulled up here. Test aborted, not supported. <laughs> Never mind, I don't have our test pulled up here. Let's try to pick a different one here. Um, that's a purge valve. Oh, this is handy. Test aborted, not supported. That's the one I have. We got the purge valve. We got a purge valve duty cycle, which that's going to be irrelevant to us. And I can hear that clicking up under the hood. All right, well, that's not helpful. We got canister vent valve. When I go to that, which it shows it as a duty cycle control, which Ford often does. Yeah, test, test aborted, not supported. So that's not very helpful. Let me uh, poke around here. Let me make sure I'm not missing it somewhere is here in another spot on the scan tool. I don't believe I am, but I'm gonna take a look. So I was looking in live data. Oh, look at that. You see that, that did say no. Yeah, see it's flickering. Yes, no, yes, no. Um, these are the only data pins that I could find. So we got our vent duty cycle, uh, which obviously is a zero. And then we have our two circuits here. Let's see, canister vent output fault detected. And this is switching from yes to no. And then um, canister not venting failure mode. True, yes. Um, which is interesting. So this I expect to see because we have a code. So EVAP system, is in canister not vent, oh, is not venting failure mode. Okay, I was reading that wrong. Interesting. Um, well, let's just check our circuit for what we know. We may have to grab a different scan tool and see if, um, you know, see if this is just a, a fault on Altel or if this really doesn't have a canister vent valve test. I can't imagine that it doesn't. We've got our test light hooked to something in the back that's actually made out of metal. <laughs> kind of hard to find. Uh, we, let's just check for power here on one side or the other. Just back poke that in there. Nothing there. Which if our solenoid's open circuited, we're only gonna have power on one side anyways. Nothing there. Okay, either our test light's not hooked to something good, which I have no way to test that, or we literally have no power here. Let me double check on diagram. I believe that comes from a fuse, but I wanna make sure. Yeah, it does. Um, fuse number something or other, which also is the same one that feeds this, which we talked about. Let's just see for poop and laughter if we have any power here. Like I say, we may end up having to move our test slate back there. See if either one of these have power. And they don't. I just need to make sure. You always gotta test your test equipment, so rookie mistake here. Let me find someplace else to clip this thing. Clip up there on the subframe. Okay, there we go. All right, this one we're good on that. So we know we got a good working test light now. Let's go back to test A that we were doing. Like a bunch of idiots, we didn't check the fuse before we lifted up in the air, but being that we only had one solitary coat, I didn't imagine we had a blown fuse, so. Nothing on that side. Come on, baby. 
Oh, do we really have no power on this? If that'd be great because that means it's broke somewhere it's down here. Either I'm a really bad back prober. All right, let's have a little gander again. Yeah, I'll be dipped. Yeah, we got no power. Huh, I wonder where that splice is because like I say, that same wire, or same fuse that feeds this, feeds this, so it's gotta be spliced straight here somewhere. How did my big fat nose miss past a broken or green wire? That's embarrassing, you're embarrassing me, Eric. I think I'm, I think I might see it. I usually don't like going touching things. I don't have my glass on, but I think I see a little, oh yeah, I see a little bit of that dust right there. Just the slightest little tinge. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, folks. I'm getting older. I see a little bit of green tinge here. Let me zoom you in on that. Enhance. Enhance. Oh, unenhance. Focus you. Come on, man. You see that little green tinge? Just a tinge of green. I think that's where we're gonna find our problem. I can't believe I walked right past that. Good thing it's not a King Cobra. You wanna know why I walked right past it? I'll give you one guess. Cause I didn't have my glasses on. Oh, wow. Where you at, baby? There it is. We don't wanna miss the money shot. Let's uh, see all that grit and the gravel that sat up here. Just, actually, it's still got a piece of grit in there. Let me show you because everybody's going to be contemplating what happened here. I know what happened here. See, there's a piece of, it's like a little stone in your palm when you wreck your bicycle and you fall down and you got to dig these out of your palm. Boom, sounds the same. All gritty, but yeah, it's got the grit and the gravel up in there. And it just done chafed through. So it must be our splices somewhere up in there somewhere. Yep, should have known, but this is why we test and don't guess. Okay, get your tissues ready. We get up behind that. Don't you break just yet. The people need to see this one. Ba ba do da boom ba yeah, sexy music. Ooh, money shot. Ah, <sighs> what a bunch of grown-ups we are, huh? We're gonna let that baby open. Oh, we better slit her open some more. Might be future problems being prevented here. Give that a little slit. Oh yeah, all that gravel and stuff in there. You can, it's interesting what it did to the outside of these wires. That's really peculiar. Well, that's fun. I guess we just have to fix the one that's actually, oh, this one's bad too. Uh, is it the same? Okay, no, that's a different color wire. Let's fix one at a time. I don't want to mix these up. These wires are so similar in color. I don't want to. I don't want to screw it up. Well, I guess we can't. There's gonna be another money shot here. Ready? Oh no, that was just broken insulation. Dang. Let's see the answer to the phone there. Well, money shot or not, we had to fix it, or we'll have to fix it. Where's your crack? Where's your crack? Right there, I think. I like to slice them down the crack. I hit it? Yes, sir. Let's get her opened up all the way here. There we go. Mm -hmm. See what we're dealing with. Who you been talking with? Who you been dealing with? That's a quote from Rush Hour. I need to know who you been talking with, who you been dealing with. Where's the little girl at? I haven't watched Rush Hour in a long time. Love me some Jackie Chan. Let's see. Yep, so we're gonna end up fixing two wires. We got this one here that's chowdered up. And then of course, our fending wire here. And then, I don't know about this one. It has a lot of rub marks on it. So, anyways, let's get some wire repair stuff. Now, for my favorite part of the day, the pissing people off part. 
Not really. That's not my favorite part of the day. It's just a part of the day. It's inevitable, especially if you do things online. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> oh boy. Eh. You can go from here to zero pretty quick. That's okay. Yes, sir. We'll give that a little heat treatment. All right, we'll let that baby cool down. We'll chop off the next one. Like I said, that one's just through the insulation, but if we don't fix it now, it's, you know, pay me now or pay me later. That's what they say. There's both those fixed. We're just going to wrap a little tape around it, particularly if this is an area that's prone to chafage. This to be on our safe side. Stick our poly loom back over it. that probably loom back over these guys we'll come right over this whole mess what's up mess though Right, yeah, cocoa. Ooh, hot cocoa. What did I do to deserve that? Is it because I asked you? <laughs> <laughs> I try to make myself feel special. <laughs> You're special. Oh, thanks. Well, we just had to sniff out a broken wire. Uh-huh. Guess what? It smells like burning wire out here. Oh, yeah, it's just... Guess what? I, I looked right past it. Wow. Off your game, huh? Yeah, I lost my game today. You know why? You needed your goggles? I was not seeing it. I don't know. Usually I have a sixth sense for this kind of stuff. A little embarrassing. It took almost five minutes to find this one. Oh boy. Yeah. Not good. So not good. But it's too bad this hangs down and rubs on that freaking tray. What are you going to do about it though, huh? Put zip tie. You put zip tie. I was just seeing that. I was just seeing it. Don't steal my thunder. Well, you get all the thunder. Jeez. Yeah, steal my thunder. Look at that. It's almost like that was made for that. Am I right? Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're here to show me this. I know. How was your nap? It was good. <laughs> I need a job like yours. Oh, when's the last time I took a nap? If I had a job like mine, you could never call in sick. You can never be like, when listen. Do, when do I call in sick, bro? That's what I'm saying. I want to be able to call in sick. Am I not supposed to show you because you're looking rough? I look rough. <laughs> That's what you just told me a minute ago. I did say that. Oh, you said you're like, you did I'm like, like this. I said I'm in like La La Land. Oh. I just woke up. Mm. That's some hot cocoa. <laughs> Yowzer. You can call in sick. Oh, there's, no. a, there's a lady here. Okay. Cut, cut, cut. Well, let's see, I plugged this in, but I suppose you guys want to see if we were right or not. I can't see, but we'll just try reaching in here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ta-da. All right. Ta-da! Yeehaw! All right, I wonder if with the circuit repaired, I wonder if the output test works. I'm gonna take and clear the code. Sometimes certain tests will be restricted because of a DTC, but typically they will say that, or at least what I've seen in the past, like unable to perform test due to DTC, you know, something along, uh, along those lines. So let me let it reread the codes here. I'll clear them out. And then we'll try that again because, boy, I tell you, that's kind of annoying if they don't have a canister vent valve test on a scan tool, at least on the 2020. Uh, we could always grab a different tool to see, but uh, being that we fixed it, I'm almost not that curious. Yeah, test still didn't work. Um, I went and uh, washed this off, but uh, this, this material they use is absolute trash. It's just like a sponge, you know, it's, it's a fabric of some sort. 
you know, and it just absorbs water. Same crap they use in the fender liners, you know. It's just like I said, you can see the water literally running right out of it. See that? You just milk the water right out of it. So it just holds all the salt and the mud and the crud and the tears. <laughs> Uh, of course they put it all over everything and the sucky part is as soon as this stuff gets wet or gets oil on it it just you know just starts hanging down so it's pretty terrible stuff but I don't know do what you want with it I guess That's it folks, fixing the canister vent valve control circuit, your P0446 on your, almost said Chevrolet, but it's not, it's a Ford Escape, next best thing, uh, the Ford Escape. So now I'm just gonna let them run it through a drive cycle. I'm not gonna rabbit trail down anything else. I'm gonna assume that the large leak code is because of the inability of the canister vent to control itself and actually look for a leak. Not uncommon to see those codes together, uh, particularly on General Motors, we would see them a lot canister vent valve code, canister vent valve circuit code, large leak, small leak, you know. I, I, I never knew how it could throw small and large at the same time when a vent was stuck wide open, but it's just, you know, it's just how it is. It is what it is, and uh, that's it. So uh, maybe this is a common issue, maybe it's a not so common issue, maybe it's just gonna be particularly common in, uh, in the Northeast, in the salt belt states, and particularly where we live on dirt roads, so the underbelly guards there to make i assume i, I assume it's probably for aerodynamics uh, along with uh, sound deadening is going to be my is my guess uh, usually most of the crap they put on the car is is because of you know epa regulations trying to get that little bit better fuel mileage so i assume it's aerodynamics but i assume the material that they use a we know they use it because it's super cheap and b i assume it's probably a little more sound deadening than uh, you know, like some kind of hardy plastic. I could be wrong on both accounts. I'm no engineer, but uh, I am. Dang it, I cannot think of a good one. Questions, comments, Insta, Facebook. And uh, just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.